These are the eight sections that I think that'll be important for you to achieve a sub 20 minute 5K. The important aspects are going to be the base training, interval training, tempo training, and the long run. And we're also going to talk about structure, adaptation, pacing, and times. If you're able to understand all these eight areas, and you've got a decent base level of fitness, and you're very close to ready to a 20 minute 5K, this guide list here is going to help you finally do that sub 20 minute 5K. Depending on your base level of fitness will be a good indicator of whether this plan suits you at this time or not. This plan is probably more suitable for people who are close to running 21, 22, 23 minutes in their 5 days currently. What is the aim of the base training? To prepare ourselves for improved aerobic efficiency. If you currently run roughly 3 to 5 times a week, but all your runs are roughly the same level, there's a good opportunity that you already have a good solid base to begin running faster on. A good example to follow for your base training will be to run 3 to 5 times a week, roughly anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. At least once a week trying to go over 45 minutes to add a little bit of length into your workout. It's very hard to find out what level your base should be at this point, but any good base plan can involve between 6 to 10 weeks of steady running, but quite quickly into that 6 week period you might find that you want to vary up or add some of the tools that we have later on in this 5k video. A base plan can be quite difficult to do sometimes if you're not comfortable running the same type of runs each day. That's why I recommend introducing the interval, the tempo, and the longer run into your workout. For someone who wants to run a 5k under 20 minutes, most likely they're probably going to be running somewhere between 30 to 50 kilometers per week or 20 to 30 miles. The next section, and possibly one of the most important sections of you trying to create a faster time in anything, is going to be some sort of interval work. Interval work generally has our pace on average slightly faster than the race pace. If my race pace is 4 minutes per kilometer to achieve a 20 minute 5k, then in my intervals I'm looking to achieve a pace slightly under that pace. For example, that might look like 5 by 1 kilometers running at around 350 or 355 per kilometer, with perhaps a 60, 90 or 120 second recovery. What are some of the aims of the interval training? The aims are we're trying to make sure that you get used to running under pace effort. If you're going to run a 5k under 20 minutes, you better get used to running that pace and a little bit faster in training. Then when you have to go down to throw down and do our 5k pace, it should feel a little bit more comfortable. Interval training helps us to build our VO2 max output, which means that all that heavy breathing that you're doing, you're going to get more comfortable doing this as you do more interval work. When you end up running that 5k, you're soon going to realize that the 5k is a race which feels like it's very hard for 3 or 4 kilometers, but then it's just going to drag on. When you get to those final 2 kilometers, your body's going to want to slow down before you have the final adrenaline surge. Interval training is going to allow you to be much more prepared to keep a more steady and even pace throughout the race. Again, our average pace for interval training should be somewhere around 350 to 355 per kilometer on average. What are some of the workouts we can do? Well, the old 12 by 400 meters at that average goal pace, but about 90 second recovery is a good goal to start off with. We can also try the 5 by 1 kilometer. If the start these efforts are too hard for you, feel free to add a little bit of walking in that 2-3 minute recovery time. In the end, when trying to get a 5k goal, any variation of a cumulating 5k distance is probably going to help you do your goal. Equally, we could say we could do 24 by 200 meters, we can do 5 by 1000, 6 by 800, 8 by 600. They'll all roughly accumulate to around 5000 meters for the goal that you're doing. The aim is to make sure that you want to be on average under your race pace goal to help you get to your 5k. If you do any of these variations of workouts and you can't get under your average race pace goal for the workouts, the chances are you're not going to be in a position to be able to do a 5k under 20 minutes. Tempo training is an important feature to get yourself comfortable to run the 5k distance and also roughly the 5k pace. A tempo session should be close to race pace but not too close. To run a sub 20 minute 5k, the best guideline with her kilometer is 4 minutes 20. For a 5k, this gives you a 22 minute tempo run. The tempo helps you build stamina and used to the level of pace that you need for a 5k race. It also builds confidence if you do it week to week as you feel yourself getting more in control when you're running at that pace. Two work examples that we'll have is a 20 minute tempo run at roughly 4 minutes 20 per kilometer. And then if you want to lengthen it out, you can go for a 30 minute tempo run at roughly 4 minutes 30 per kilometer. Think of the tempo run as around 85% effort or roughly 8 out of 10. The long run also helps you prepare for longer distances that you might do in the future. 
Yes, this program today is for a 5K, but you might find out that once you've completed that 5K that your interests lie within the 10K, the half marathon, the marathon, or even further afield. Run along distances helps us to increase leg strength. It also helps us to get used to delivering more oxygen to the muscles, which helps us to run longer. And also when we're going back to the 5K, helps us run a little bit faster and helps us develop a better aerobic power. For this 5K program, your long runs can average anywhere between 5 to 5.15 to 5.30 per kilometer. But sticking to a long run pace isn't the key. You just have to make sure that the long run isn't a workout that ends up you overreaching or going into any of the faster paces in this program. If the longer run ends up being a little bit slower and you end up stopping for a little bit, I wouldn't worry be too much about it. Easy workout examples for the long run are trying to get that long run up to 60 minutes plus and each week for a little goal, try to add five minutes onto that long run each week and building it up to 90 minutes. Anything over 90 minutes probably is necessary to achieve the 5K goal. For any training plan, one of the most important things is going to be adaptation. We need to find the mix between the physiological and the psychological parts of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to adapt to. Physiological is about pushing things to the limit. We need to push our body to the limit to make it want to make a change. But sometimes we have to figure out what is better. Is it better to push yourself to the maximal output or to the optimal output? The great thing about physiological effort is Usually you're running, you'll figure out quite quickly if the effort is far too great for what you want to do. If you've ever went out for a 5k run, and after the first kilometer, it was impossible for you to keep moving, the chances are you went out a little bit too quick and you tried to get as close to maximal output as possible. Pushing things to the limit is very important. It will help you adapt to a faster, a stronger, a better body. In the end, in all running workouts, strength workouts, going workouts to the gym, if you're training for a specific purpose, I always go for the rule of three. You're gonna have one excellent workout. You're gonna have one workout which is okay, and you're gonna have one workout which is just you working hard that day. You're never gonna have an amazing run every single time. That's the rule of three. To adapt to a faster stimulus, it's important for you to run faster. But faster doesn't always mean 100%. In fact, when training for the 5K, most of the goals that you're gonna do are gonna involve you running at 90% of your best level because you wanna get comfortable with the pace you're moving at. The aim is for you not to go out and run one kilometer interval repeats as fast as you possibly can, stick within the time goals that are set, and you'll get a faster 5K. The final psychological take from this is, more often than not when you're going running for the first time, you're gonna to start to ask yourself the question, am I even a runner? And the question on this is, we're all born to run, we're all runners, you just have to make up that psychological idea in your head, or that psychological thought is, am I actually a runner, or do I want to be a runner? More often than not, following a bad program makes you feel like you're not a runner, and you'll never run again. Don't be that person. Take your time, learn how to pace. Now, this is probably gonna be the most argumentative part of the video. There are many, many plans online that will get you to a sub 20 minute 5K. And a lot of them are very, very good. And the structure I'm gonna give you is a safe general structure that fits into someone who arguably has a little bit of time in their week, can commit to five days of training a week, and has probably got a base bit of fitness. Day one, we're gonna have the interval workout. Day two, then you'll go into your easy session. Day three, then you'll try your tempo session. Day four can be a day off where you just relax, go for a walk, do some stretching, or maybe even some cross training. Day five, again, I recommend going out for an easy run and adding some strides into the end of the workout. Day six, then will be your long run, then you go for 60 minutes, with day seven being a recovery. Many training programs will probably put you in the day five and replace that there with a secondary harder session. This could be a pyramid workout, a fartner workout, or a slightly longer version of interval training. Okay, you've done all the training, you feel comfortable, you're able to successfully do your intervals, your tempo, your long runs, your easy runs, and you've got your base training built up. Done. When you've all these things done, the chances are you should be in a position now that you're able to go out and run a 5K close to 20 minutes and even under 20 minutes. But sometimes in race day, things can go wrong. Sometimes we get to the back of the pack and we can't move up. Sometimes we move up a little bit too quick, but here are some of the main reasons I find that it goes wrong when you're trying to go for your 5K goal. Number one, don't run up at 100 miles an hour. Yes, in the day you know you're ready to get this goal, but the chances are if you move up a little bit too quick and end up pushing yourself into a 330 or a 340 per kilometer pace, chances are that day the race is gonna go really wrong and you're only gonna end up slowing down towards the end of the race. Number two, if you have a Garmin watch or a watch with per kilometer capability, it's recommended probably use that you can look down and understand the times in your watch and probably be able to figure out if you're going too fast or too slow on that day. Most of the time when you go out and do that first 5k time trial, you're probably going to go fractionally under the goal pace that you want to do. 
it'll be your job in the first couple hundred meters to bring yourself down to a more relaxed place and understand that you can do what you need to do, you just need to control your pace and not go out too fast. Three, if this is the first time you've ever had a Garmin watch or a watch that you can use to track your metrics in the day, don't learn how to use it on the race day. Make sure you're comfortable understanding these numbers before you start. If you don't, you might go out into your race, you might realize that your watch is actually on miles and not on kilometers, and therefore you'll have all this data here confusing you and it can even wreck your race before you've even hit the first kilometer. Four, don't panic. So many times I've gone off on a race with a pace I probably went off is 10% too quick. If you're controlled and if you've done the training and you've experienced interval training, you can bring yourself back down to a pace and control what you're doing. But this is only common experience. It'll be a little bit harder on the first time you go for that 5k time trial because you're going to be full of that adrenaline. But just don't panic, relax, look at the watch, look at the times and understand that you've done the training and you can do this goal. Five. Remember, if you're going to run a sub 20 minute 5K, it's actually no good you running four minute kilometers back to back. It's probably better to go out with a gold pace of 356 to 358 per kilometer, which gives you a couple of seconds at the very end of the race if things go wrong to make sure you dip under your gold time. Six, remember, if you've done the training and you successfully do those tempos at those pace, if you can do those intervals at those pace, the chances are you should be confident that you can go into this race and do your goal time. Just believe in that. And lastly, understand the course. You may find out in this race that you're going into that the first kilometer is a downhill section of the course. If the first kilometer is a downhill section, you're going for a 3.55 per kilometer pace, the chances are that first kilometer is gonna slip into a 3.35, 3.40 and then you might have to go into a hill in the second kilometer. You need to look at the course, understand if there's a flat course, if there's hills in the course, because these things may be a factor else. But you're only gonna know this if you understand the course before you start the time trial. Why we out of this page? Well, because many years ago, I was a track athlete, and I used to convert all my running into kilometers. So I used to 400, 800 meter repeats around track. We were tracking 400 meters. It was much more easier for us to converse in meters. However, when you leave the track area, some people want to know what the kilometers is in mile output, depending from where you are in the world. Also, we've added in here the timings for a treadmill. You'd be surprised that they met people I know who only run on treadmills, and they may run on a treadmill four or five times a week. I try to ask them, what is your per minute per kilometer pace, they can answer that. They can vertically me saying, oh, I'm running 10 kilometers an hour, I'm running 12 kilometers an hour, or I'm running 15 kilometers an hour. These timings here are trying to help you be able to convert all these times, be able to create your own program in the gym, if you talk in miles, or if you talk in kilometers. So quick little recap here are some of the times that we have. Interval training should be roughly around 350 pace per kilometer. Tempo training should be roughly around four minutes 20 per kilometer. A long run should be roughly around 515 to 545 per kilometer. If you're going to go out and do a 5k race, the chances are you need to run a pace under four minutes per kilometer. If you're running exactly four minutes per kilometer, you're going to do a 5k in exactly 20 minutes. Probably best to go out with a strategy to run 356 to 358 per kilometer. 